Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a board to put my Rockler pen press and vertical drilling jig on that makes it easy to mount securely to my drill press table. This Rockler pen press and drilling jig is item number 24577 on Rockler.com and it typically sells for $99.99. On occasion, you can get it on sale for a little bit less than that. This is a jig that has been around for a few years, and it works pretty well. Now, this is a handy jig for pressing pen parts together and also for holding parts vertically uh, for drilling on your drill press. While this works very well as a pen press and a vertical drilling jig, there are some better options out there on the web, that, you know, such as PSI, they have a pen assembly and disassembly press, and you can save my review on that at the address below. As for a vertical drilling press, this works pretty well, in my opinion. Now, you may find some opinions out there and reviews that are negative, and some are good. This is not a precision machine, as most of our jigs are not. Uh, we're not doing machining processes here that are within very close tolerances. So some variation, some looseness, you know, is fairly acceptable, except especially for something like this. This does really holds well for drilling small pen parts uh, or even bottle stopper blanks. I've also used it on some blanks for drilling some of the holes in various handles for like pizza cutters and ice cream scoops. There are perhaps better alternatives out there than this one, but since I bought this many years ago, when I first started doing making pens, uh, so this has worked very well for me, and I'm going to keep using it because it's, it works sufficiently for me. I'm going to go on here now, and I will show you how I put this jig on a board that makes it easily mountable on my drill press table and holds things securely for me. I have this Rockler pen press and drilling jig, and basically this gives you a max opening of about seven inches here. Of course that closes up completely. And what I do as a part of this is I try to put a line on here with one of these silver markers. This is uh, Milwaukee Metallic uh, Ink Sol. <laughs> so I kind of go along there and go along this edge too to try and give myself a definition as to where this blank is at for doing the drill through as a backer for when you're do drilling through to avoid tear out on your work pieces. Now as you can see when this is closed up, close to being completely closed, it's got these uh, square shapes here that can hold your square pieces, can also hold your round pieces. Okay, in this you can see the inner parts here has a cavity in here uh, on both ends here and a little bit of a dimple in there that recesses it even a little bit more. This is for the pen pressing part for pressing the pieces together as a pen press. Now I had this previously installed onto this piece of three quarter inch plywood. I cut out these spaces here to provide space to fit around the post of my drill press so that I could slide it back and forth so I could set drill bit depths based on this. I'm redesigning this board to allow me to use T-nuts to hold this in place rather than using clamps on here so I need to make this board wide enough on both ends here so I can cover these T-tracks. Also, since I am going to be building a new top for this drill press, a new table, this is a Harbor Freight table, which served its purpose for a couple of years. Now I want something better. So I'm going to be putting some slots in where I put these T-bolts in to accommodate for any varying widths on what these tracks are going to be compared to uh, this and the new tabletop will be. If I were drilling a normal piece here and I want to be able to set the depth on this, normally my board will only go back this far so it wouldn't give me you know, very good clearance here past this edge to be able to set the depth of my bit. So that's why I put in these cutout here so I can fit around the post of my drill press. So now I can slide this back 
and it clears well enough that I can now push this down enough that I can set more easily the depth of where I want my drill bit to go to. Laying out my new board here at 16 inches wide, 12 inches deep. Got my center line here at 8 inches center. Got my two 6 inch radius cutouts here on each end. And then these marks along here are lining up with the current T-tracks that are on the current table that I have. Then what I'm going to do, where I locate the bolts to go into here, I'm going to put these slots so I can adjust the bolts back and forth, depending if the track is a little bit different when I make my new table. Then these two lines here, if you can see them well there, that's where the jig will sit at, so I got it sitting center on this board. Something else I've done here is I've made these three-quarter round curves on the corners here that I'm going to trim off with a bandsaw by my thing here. Oh, I've traced out that three-quarter round on there. Trim that off with the bandsaw and then I will trim it up and make it neater with the oscillating sander. I have my layout lines here for where I'm going to locate these T-bolts for attaching this to the drill press table. So I located the center in here two inches in and then I'm going to make the length of this elongated hole to be one inch. So I'm going half inch to this side half inch to that side and then I took my circle template found my 5 16 hole here and located that and lined up these marks to mark the ends of my circles here and then I connected them by pencil with a ruler here. What I'll do is I'll probably drill out the ends of these holes here with Forstner bits and then maybe use a 5 16 uh, router bit to finish these off with some guides on there. I'll show you that as I get along there. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is go to the bandsaw, trim off these corners and all four corners, cut out these circles here, these half circles for that, and then sand them up good and smooth and flush. Then I'm going to go to the router and do some roundovers around all the edges to smooth it all out. So I'm here at my drill press to drill these holes for the slots I'm going to make for the T-bolts. Put it in here and I can't get all the way back because I'm bumping into the post of the drill press back there. So what I have to do is angle this in here and uh, drill it from this way. So I'll get the other end of this hole. Since I've got that center line mark on there that helps me to line up the uh, red point to the bit so I'm on center. So Got those holes drilled, and then I'll cut this out a little bit between here and maybe stick some guide things on there and use a like a trim router bit on my router table to get these lines straight between there. Okay, for trimming out on the router here, these holes for these um, cutouts for the T-bolts to come up through and to give it slide for adjustment between different size tracks. I've got these two pieces of, so I'm going to repurpose them here again and attach them here so that they line up right on these holes and that'll provide a guide for my router bit with a guide bearing. Peel off the double stick tape backing and stick this on carefully. So then I'll stick another piece on the back side of this one and Fasten it on here also, and that'll give me a good straight guide. Okay, so I've got this positioned in here in the hole on my router bit, and I've got the height set so that the bearing will right along the sides of these guides here. So I'm kind of centering it here, and I'll get a start and kind of slowly and carefully cut out that slot. Okay, so I've finished that one. Okay, so I've got that hole cut out and my T-slot can fit through that and the knob will you know, fit on the other side. So, good deal. I've been cleaning up a little bit here. Now, I'll repeat this for the other three holes or slots. I've got my slots cut out in all these uh, four corners here. So one other thing I want to do before I go to the bandsaw is I want to sand all these edges here, make sure they're smooth before I go to the bandsaw. Ok, 
And then what I can also do is uh, sand around these corners here. They're such small things that uh, all I have to do is do it here on this sander. Okay, now I can go to the bandsaw and cut out all these other circle parts. Okay, here at the bandsaw, I'm going to cut out these two circles, and that'll be about it. Huh? Other than sanding up to the lines there to get it all even. Okay, I got that cut out. I can go to the oscillating sander, smooth out these and send them to the lines. And then I'll go to the router and route over a round over on these to soften the edges. Okay, with this I put in the largest sanding spindle I could to fit within this here. And I will send this up to the lines here and make it nice and smooth and to the pattern. Okay, that's looking very good. Okay, so I put in a quarter inch roundover bit here into the router table and got the height adjusted so that the edge of my workpiece just barely kissed the edge of the bit blade and turned it on and went around in this direction and rounded over the edges and have this result. Nice rounded over edges all the way around. And now I will go over this with mineral spirits on a cotton cloth here. Old t-shirt or something. And that works great for erasing all the pencil lines off of here. And it doesn't raise the wood grain like water does. I'll let that dry then a little bit of light sanding and I'll be ready to put on a finish. Uh, I'll probably put on, yeah, I'll put on some uh, tongue oil finish and then maybe wax it over a little bit too. But I don't want to wax the bottom side of this because I don't want it to be too slippery on my drill press table. Now I have this mounted and I've got the four T-nuts on here to hold it into these tracks on the table. As you can see this. Some T-nuts I had and these handles I had from Woodpeckers. I bought a package of these. Uh, got some kind of a good deal on them. And uh, bring this up and get my drill bit in there, centering it in this, so I can get this, you know, correctly located and centered. And then I can tighten down the T nuts. Now I also did this and had these lined up, whereas the T nuts or T knobs would be aligned kind of centrally in the two tracks while I determine exactly where I'm going to screw these down to so I can have it as well centered as I could. Sometimes when you put certain work pieces in here, since they're not always perfectly square and not always you know, a perfect center on them, you need this adjustability in order to be able to get onto the center of your workpiece because it's not always going to be perfectly uh, centered here as this uh, jig is. Now you can see how I've got this board and these cutouts here. And this gives me the ability to get around the post of my drill press so I can slide it back and forth when I need to for making any adjustments uh, for setting the depth of my drill bit. Okay, I have set the depth of my drill bit here for my work piece so it just barely goes beyond this edge of this jig, as you can see here. And that'll get me all the way through the work piece and into that backup piece there for to help prevent the tear out. So I'm setting up my drill bit on center this point on my workpiece then tightening down the T knobs here to keep my jig in place and on center. Then I will start drilling this through down to the depth that I set. Got that drilled all the way through. 
So that works pretty well with this mounted to this plate. Gives me ability to adjust back and forth so I can set my drill bit depths. In the uh, online pictures of Rockler, in their catalog, they show a drawer inside this cavity here. There's nothing I can think of that I would really want to store in there. I'd be afraid of any metal things or carbide tips or anything like that or even drill bits rattling around in there and getting nicked or dulled. Also additionally is like I take this off the table here and I store it underneath my workbench so if I tilt this thing at all the drawer's going to just slip right out on me unless you put some sort of a catch on there so it won't just fall out on you. Thank you for watching this video. If you got something out of it and you enjoyed it, please give me a like and share it with your family and friends. If you want to see what I may come up with next in the future, please subscribe. Thank you.